Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Sunday. Hopefully you're enjoying the Sunday, the weekend, and the last day that you have to play Foot Champions if you're not done already. Good luck finishing out those games for the interesting set of rewards that is coming this week uh, that EA has given us through uh, the Summer Heat promotion, which we got some more interesting content on Saturday that I want to cover, especially this guy right here and the whole controversy around the Ryan Kent not winning the SBC. We'll talk about that and actually how Ryan Kent could actually come into this game still with a footies card, could still be an SBC based on what they did last year uh, for footies, which is definitely now this Summer Heat promo rebranded for FIFA 20. So we'll talk about that as well. But uh, I want to talk about this market as well because it's Sunday week in the sell-off time and we're seeing prices go down. And again, I want to cover kind of the situation with you guys and talk about these card prices. What can you expect? And what's just going to happen as uh, this game is still slowly reaching a point where it is uh, dying or uh, reaching the end of the game cycle. But at least right now, there's a decent amount of hype. A lot of people have said to me, yo, FIFA's dead. This game is trash. It's over. It's done. That is absolutely not true at all. Just based on the, uh, um, basically the fodder prices right now, just the, the people that are still on this game with the number of transfers that I see on the market, like this is not a dead number of live transfers as it reaches throughout the day. Um, the people that I see talking about SBCs, I mean, the ease of matchups that I'm finding and still some of the prices on the market are showing me and the movements on the market, uh, show me that people are definitely not done with this game yet. The one thing that is going to make this game die out a little bit more is the fact that EA is continually releasing good content, upgraded cards. We're getting a player every single day, whether it's an objective or an SBC so far in this summer heat promo. And especially with those SBCs and the icon upgrade and these upgrade packs, this market and this game is losing a lot of coins, like at an astounding rate. People are turning stuff into squads. People are uh, or turning cards in squad wise for prime icon SBCs and upgrades. They're doing these cards and there's going to be more summer heat cards that are continually going to come out and it's going to push people to be on the game and try to get those. But it also, at some point you reach a point where you've, you've just totally dispersed your club. You have nothing in your club and it's just dry and empty. And that is when you start to see people fall off. But at least for the start of this promo, it is hype because people are playing the game they're doing the objectives like this mendy card i don't even want to know how many people are going to finish this mendy and how many people are going to finish kessie as well because kessie is actually really really easy to do i wouldn't be surprised if we get another uh objective summer heat player in the next few days um but that's just bringing there's all sorts of the game whatever you're into into fifa if you like gameplay there's ways you can grind gameplay with objectives right now if you like spcs plenty of spcs to do uh, if, if you like playing the weekend league, of course there's weekend league, but if you're a league SPC person, like if you like grinding the menus for league SPCs, getting those packs right now is like, there's no better time to grind the sued lib method and even to trade with the requirements for these, um, the league SPCs, because they're all inflated because everybody's trying to get packs. So the potentials in this game is there's just lots to do. Right now on FIFA, we're getting cool cards. There's lots to do. So there is hype. So I wanted to kind of talk about that first. Some people have been telling me there's not hype. There's absolutely hype in this game uh, at the moment on FIFA Ultimate Team. So I want to talk about that. But we are in a period of the market where a lot of cards are starting to trickle down in value as we are seeing the weekend league sell off. And again, I mentioned this earlier last week, but this weekend league sell off is going to be, uh, it's going to hit hard. This weekend is going to hit hard. There's going to be a lot of drops in price uh, as we see some of these TOTS cards who are not even in packs, obviously, just continue to fall off uh, on the market and price because um, people are now selling these cards and they're selling cards they have tradable in their squads just to be able to go out and participate in the new content that comes out, just to be able to come out and do SBCs uh, that come out in this game. And you can absolutely trade with some of these cards that are out of packs. These guys fluctuate a lot. Depay, Flippin is telling me Depay right now is 240. That's why I wanted to look at his price because that's really low, but he's actually 265 uh, on the game, right? So let's look at uh, Depay really quickly. So he was 240 to 260. So actually right now he's on a high 
But just look, this is the common theme that we saw on Saturday, and it's gonna continue today. Just these prices kind of tailing off as people go and sell cards to go do more upgrade packs, to go do more SPCs, or to complete new SPCs that come onto the game. And the thing that we're not taking into account today is that the uh, the Kent SBC did not come. Because if that Kent SBC came, there would have been so much more panic selling um, earlier today. Check out this card. Check this is the, this is the one that a lot of people are looking at today. Quincy Promez's Tots card was getting panic sold this morning because so many people in this game thought the Kent SBC was gonna come. He was 290k. When the Kent SBC did not get re-released, he went up to 370. It's now back to 345. There was a massive buyback on some cards like this today just because the panic was happening early. I don't even want to know what the rest of the panic would have been like on some other cards on this, on this game if the Kent SBC would have come out because EA would have made it expensive. And if we look at SBC fodder right now, SBC fodder is through the roof. Uh, any card that gets good links is crazy expensive just because so many people are doing SBCs at this time in FIFA. Uh, so yeah, that's just like the whole state of what happened today with the Kent SBC. And I wanted to run this by you guys as well because this is something that uh, that people have been talking about. And I don't want to talk about the Kent situation too much because it's just not... I don't know. It is what it is, man. It's just another communication type thing with EA Sports. Am I surprised that Jovic won? Maybe a little bit. But again, I think I underestimated the amount of casuals. And this is another testament to how the game is not dead. If a player like Jovic is winning a vote like this, the hardcore people, at the hardcore foot players at this stage of the game, you feel like might have a little bit more of a pull, right? Just because of uh, if maybe Kent won that, that would have told me that, hey, the community voted, the more hardcore players that know this game a lot, that are on Twitter, that are on YouTube videos, that have, you know, are in depth with like streaming and YouTube videos and like just in the FIFA community, they would know about Kent, right? But most of the casual world of FIFA players doesn't know a ton about, maybe they follow a couple of Twitter accounts or whatever, but they just don't really know about the whole Kent situation. So a lot of people chose this Jovic because if you think about the player pick, looking back in hindsight, it makes it sense, right? It makes sense. Why choose a player from the Scottish Premier League or the Saudi League when you have a chance at maybe getting an upgraded Real Madrid striker? Albeit, is this card that good? If I'm not a Real Madrid fan, I'm going to say no to this. I would rather just get Tots Suarez, Tots Benzema, uh, or, you know, some a different La Liga striker, to be completely honest, or an icon for the price of this SBC. I'm not entirely sure how much this costs. 250k for this Jovic card. Is this really worth 250? I don't think so. Um, but that's, I think, why the the casuals kind of carried this boat through um, with the the Jovic winning over the Ryan Kent is, in my opinion, what happened today. This Jovic card, you know, did it kind of hamper the hype today a little bit? Maybe a little bit, but still, I would love to see statistics from EA, right? If they're giving us a vote, they're giving us something to vote on. Like we voted on Team of the Year nominees. I wish they would show us the percentage votes, right? Okay, you can round, you can even, you know, just show us by like, it doesn't have to be super duper exact and super like in depth. I don't need to see that, oh, 40% of people from Germany voted for Jovic and 70% from Spain voted for Jovic. And, you know, I don't need to see that. I just need to see as a FIFA community, this is how you voted. And I feel like that would be a really cool, uh, just extra stat to know, right? Especially with all these cards that are voting and we have more and more things every year in foot that are voting based. If we knew the percentage points and just how close it was, that'd be kind of fun, right? So I wish EA could tell us that because I know and we know they have the statistics um, on all that kind of stuff. So I wish that we could see some of that. EA Sports, if you're listening, that'd be really cool. All you have to do is tweet it out, right? I think I tweeted today. I was like, if EA would tweet, all they had to say is Luka Jovic won the the community fan vote for the skill move boost winner uh sbc summer heat card version with a 56 percent vote or whatever 56 percent of votes this guy won like that's all you need to say like that'd be fine right and i don't think i don't even think they tweeted out this sbc today but regardless that is what it is and then speaking on ryan kent really fast ryan kent last year during footies there was a thing where um there was a thing where EA did the second chance. So the they gave us a player pick of some of cards that were um, 
overlooked because they did not win their original footies vote. So like last year it was Griezmann and I think like Milinkovic Savage or Kondogbia or something like that. Those were some of the cards that did not win their initial vote. And there was a second chance vote. So we could still see Ryan Kent's card, which will be added to foot draft. They, uh, foot economist tweeted today. And he said that they're going to let us know when those cards, Kent and Musa, are available in foot draft. They were going to give us that info. So we're going to see the Ryan Kent card. And it might be able to be re-released via second chance. Now, if they're putting it in draft, maybe it's not going to be like they're not going to do a second chance vote like they did last year. But it is still possible. It is something that we could see. Um, just because that is something that happened last year. So that's something to kind of keep in mind and think about as well. But again, back to what we were talking about with the market. If you have any cards that are in packs, headliners, shapeshifters, um, you know, those are the cards that are in packs along with like once to watches and some other informs. If you have any of those cards, I think I forgot. Did I forget something? Headliners, shapeshifters, other team of the group stage, not nah, scream cards. I mean, if you have like Firmino or Aguero or something, um, these cards are probably going to continue dropping. If we look at the trends from last year, these guys literally just kept going down in price. Like they just, they didn't stop. Like they just kept going down because they continued to get packed more upgrade packs. People are losing coins as they do these icon SBCs. So that's going to lower the value for a lot of these cards. So if you're trying to trade with these cards, just be very, very careful. You will be able to like fluctuation trade them a little bit because these guys do fluctuate around in price because they're getting packed on a day when we have tradable pack supply. Like the Shapeshifter Lucas, like how much is this guy? Shapeshifter Lucas Mora is somebody that I traded with on Thursday, I think it was, because of um, him getting supplied with a with an SBC and then Bruno Fernandez as well. So this guy right now is like 80, 86, 87,000 coins. Uh, this is a very kind of a rare Shapeshifter card. The Shapeshifters are already rare to begin with. This guy might fluctuate around a bit, right? Let's say there's one day where we have packs. Uh, that are released he drops down to like 70,000 coins um in like some some undercuts and some selling and because people are packing him and then boom he bounces right back up to 80 that's something you could see it's especially going to work again next weekend on maybe like a thursday friday type time frame it happened with bruno fernandez how much is bruno fernandez this car right now uh united played this weekend so he's got some hype 140k for Bruno Fernandez, the winter refresh player at the moment. I was buying this guy for 100,000 coins flat on uh, Thursday night. And I sold them all on, on Wednesday or on Friday for um, 120K plus. And it looks like I could have sold for more. But I made decent profit then. Just because this is like the best version of Bruno. Again, the United hype is back. So that made him rise up a little bit. And this is like the best version of this card in FIFA. Uh, with Premier League games back up and running, there's some more hype. People are playing Man U squads, right? And they're using these players that they're now watching again in real life. Speaking of which, um, they confirmed, and I think it was in a tweet earlier, but ones to watch cards, headliners. Team of the Week is coming back on Wednesday. So watch out for some of the games this weekend. I haven't really kept close tabs on which cards have done well which cards have had good performances. But if a card does get a team of the week this week, their headliner card or their ones to watch could still get upgraded. That is confirmed by EA Sports. So with team of the week coming back on Wednesday, that's something that, A, maybe there's some games today on Sunday still that you're going to be going and watching. Who plays today on Sunday? I don't even know. Let me check this really quick. Uh, Sofa score. Let me check and see what games we have on Sunday today. Maybe there's some OTWs involved. 21st, who do we have? We have Sheffield, Newcastle. So I guess you could say Joe Ellington. I don't know if he's playing or not. Chelsea and Villa. So maybe we have a situation with um, with um, Pulisic if he's playing. Real Madrid. So you have the Jovic card, I guess, as uh, I want us to watch. That's just something to keep in mind. You know, you have Lukaku for Inter. Just something to keep in mind uh, that we have once to watch cards and headliners are, are live. Still, since we have real life games going on and Team of the Week does come out uh, this Wednesday in foot. But again, the real story is just the market's going to continue to sell off. And this is a big question that I've gotten and I want to talk about it with you guys as well. Is there going to be a low point where these cards hit a low point on like a Sunday night, a Monday morning? And are they going to rebound from that? In my opinion, I really don't think they are. I'm going to 
buy this and flip that for one uh 140 really quick let's try like 137 that's a nice little quick flip right there ggs thank you for the undercut man i appreciate it uh right there let's go anyways um if you want to buy any of these cards that are in packs you definitely need to wait i don't think there's going to be that much of a market rise from from sunday night into like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week, like we have seen in some of the weeks past. The only thing that I would be a bit skeptical about is if there is a market rise in some of the out of packs TOTS cards. That's where I would only see possibility and potential for a slight rise. Other than that, anything that is in packs and, and just with all of the coin draining SBCs that are coming out as a part of this promo, I think you're gonna see prices mostly trend downward and mostly just head into the red and keep going down this week for the most part. Um, just because people are losing coins, there's still gonna be more SBCs coming out for people to drain their coins and for people to, um, you know, sink their coins into untradeable content. So of course, as we get these new SBCs and as players come out, like this Parasic card, Alfonso Davies went up a bunch. I don't know if anything really went up for Luka Jovic today, except for SBC fodder. Watch out for link investments to these new cards that come out because that is a very viable trading method at this stage that you could do. And since the focus right now, there's lots of SBCs going on. One thing you can do, and this is something I don't talk about a lot, but it is one thing that you can do is you can trade with Footbin Solutions, right? So the prime icon upgrade, people are just doing these icons, right? You can look at some of the most popular SBCs that people are doing, right? Go on to Footbin. Look at the cheapest squads. If you go in out and actually look at this squad, right? Lopez is 65K, Armani is 57, Adebayor is 37K. A lot of times what happens is with these special cards, especially like Pizzy, 100,000 coins for Pizzy is what Footbin says at the moment. A lot of times these cards fluctuate a lot because when people go look for the cheapest solution, they go on Footbin, they look for the cheapest solution and they just buy the cards that they see there or, or whatever, right? Uh, and what happens is this SBC is actually not the cheapest for that long. All of a sudden, you know, Pizzy says 100K on Footbin, but then boom, if we go actually look at Pizzy right now on FIFA, this guy is not 100K. This guy is like 130,000 coins. So this is something that you could do with trading. This guy's selling at 130K. I bet he actually sells at 130, 129,000 coins as people are doing these SBCs just because people blindly follow solutions and they don't check the prices. They say, oh, Footbin says this is the cheapest, so it's got to be the cheapest. So what you can do is, going back here to Footbin, you can go down the list and maybe find a squad. Okay, 312K is what this one costs. Maybe you find a squad that's got some cards in it that are actually kind of cheap, or you go over the cheapest players by rating tab on Footbin. You know a lot of these cards are linked together with like Comedy Bowls. Comedy Bowls would be something that I'd be interested in. Or Tots cards, especially like Cruz, 80K. Is Cruz actually 80K on the market? Cruza. Cruza. Max Cruza, is he actually 80K on the market? Based on what his footprint value says, I doubt he is. I doubt he is. He's actually 90,000 coins. If we take a look at this right now, he's 90,000 coins. And there's not a lot of them to 100K. So that's a 10K swing right there. You can make tons and tons of coins doing this because right now people are just so, so addicted and so doing SBCs. That it's crazy focus on the tots cards and out of packs other specials would be my uh situation and my ideal scenario for you but still when you get up these high rateds people just go into the sbc solutions and just buy the cards so you can absolutely trade with the icon sbc right now with probably like the andombele sbc solutions you could maybe trade with um anything that requires high rated cards and these high rated squads but the prime icons the, the biggest one you could do uh but just kind of watch the fluctuation of these cards too maybe if i check on if i click on cruise let's see what his uh flipping graph does let's see what this guy's flipping graph does on on the daily because he's just needed for spcs right 79k up to 90 down to, to 80k again he went to 125 i bet i doubt he was selling there but maybe 100k down to, to 79 so this guy bounces between 80 like 77 and probably like 92, 93K at his utmost peaks. If you sell him at 90K, there's 4.5K of tax. If you're buying him at like in the 70s, there's definitely some profit to be made there. So you could just go on like the cheapest uh, cheapest players by rage, by, by rating on Footbin 
and you, you'll you'll find that a lot of these cards do sell because so many people are doing upgrade packs and especially during the week uh that is something you'll see people do because there's no weekend league right that guy's even fluctuating on the weekend league when the menu content is kind of you know maybe not the forefront when weekend league is the forefront of what everybody's doing in fifa ultimate team so that's one trading method that you guys can do right now that is very very profitable and uh it is it's working for a lot of people it's not something that i do a ton but it, it does work and these cards are fluctuating a lot just because of sbc so that is something you guys could do to make some coins right now if you're looking to make some coin to do more sbcs to do more prime icon upgrades or whatever it may be if you guys enjoyed the video today smash a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new it's been nate the foot accountant catch you guys later peace out